All right, let's get the latest um, and some insight on what's going on with Shoei Otani and everything about this nutty story from the senior writer for The Athletic and the author of The Last of His Kind, a biography on Clayton Kershaw that's going to be available on May the 7th, Andy McCulloch. Good to speak with you, Andy. Hey, thanks for having me. You bet, Andy. So um, let's get right to it. What is the latest, as far as you could tell, with the Shohei Otani gambling scandal that appears to yeah. be? We're in a bit of a holding pattern, I think, and it's it might be in that sort of uh, state for a little while, just because the, with the way that you know Major League Baseball is saying that you know Otani is not facing any sort of discipline, they're reticent to say he's you know even under investigation. I think you know based on there's competing narratives out there, right? The the you know terrific story from you know Tisha Thompson at ESPN uh, from a couple of days ago, you know outlined two basically timelines presented by Ipe Mizuhara, who's Otani's uh, interpreter, who, um, you know, sort of admitted to gambling uh, with an illegal bookmaker in Southern California. And, subs- you know, in one, the first version of the story, Otani paid off the debts, uh, you know, basically as a favor. And in the second version of the story, a day later, um, Mizuhara recanted and basically said Otani knew nothing about any of it, wasn't aware it was, you know, of all of it. It's all his fault. And subsequently, Otani's camp, you know, said that Otani was a victim of massive theft. Um, they're sort of moving forward and, you know, having, a, you know, the federal authorities look into that. They haven't even said exactly which uh, authority will be, you know, they're pursuing charges with, but they are made clear that they are pursuing charges against Mizuhara for the alleged theft. And so, you know, it's kind of going to grind on for a little bit while we kind of, there's just this weird sort of void of, no one really knows what's going on, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so how would Otani face no discipline with four and a half million of his dollars winding up in the hands of mm-hmm. a Southern California illegal bookmaker under federal indictment? Uh, I, I guess the only way that yeah. I, I might have answered my own question that, to you, Andy, is that's where suddenly everyone... And his camp says, no, 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 forget everything that, that the interpreter told Tisha Thompson in his first interview. He He's a thief. Is that is that the the reasoning, do you think, behind the at, at change this in story? Point, at, at, well, I, I can't speak to that. I mean, that you know, I, I can't, we can't explain why the story changed, but certainly the story changing is very uh, interesting, to say the least. Um, and yeah, I mean, the reason that he is not considered a under investigation is, you know, the way Major League Baseball has framed it is it's possible he's the victim of a massive theft as he and his legal team are um, alleging. And so in that case, you know, you're investigating him for theoretically being the victim of a crime. Um, But they're very clearly, you know, they're monitoring the situation. I think they're going to defer to, you know, the the federal authorities in terms of looking into this and sort of getting to the bottom of it. But, but yeah, but when you look at the first version of events that Mizuhara put forth that Otani, you know, transferred the money to um, an illegal bookmaker, yes, that would certainly put him in uh, Otani theoretically in some uh, legal exposure in California, in addition to exposure to, you know, punishment of some form for major league baseball that was my question for you is that uh the the first version of events the tuesday story out of the interpreter uh ishe mizuhara that uh otani was a good guy who mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> helped him cover four and a half million dollars of debt which was just a staggering amount of money andy for somebody who supposedly made uh, topped out at half a million dollars in the year. Like I, it, it really is for in terms of his own salary. Um, that if that was in fact the story, is that Otani being open to suspension from Major League Baseball just because his money was in the hands of an illegal bookmaker, regardless of how it got there? Right. Uh, unclear if it would be a suspension. There is. So the way that Rule 21 works, uh, which is sort of governs Major League Baseball's policy on on gambling, is if um, there's a huge distinction of whether or not the bets were placed on baseball. Right. If you bet on a game that you're not involved with, it's a year long ban. If you bet in a game in which you are involved with, it's a permanent ban. Um, And if you bet on with an if you place bets with an illegal bookmaker, you're subject to a sort of nebulous commissioner's discretion punishment. Um, As of right now, there is no evidence, you know, that Otani bet on baseball. 
Uh, Mizuhara did say that in the account that he subsequently recanted, but he did say, you know, there's no one has come forth and said there's any evidence linking Otani or Mizuhara or anyone involved in this to betting on baseball. But that is the distinction is like there's those three prongs of Rule 21. And if it is proven, and again, this is very speculative because Otani's camp is suggesting this is what did not happen, but if it is proven that he, you know, paid off debts uh, with an illegal bookmaker, then it gets into a gray area of how do you interpret the third prong of Rule 21? You know, it is paying off a debt the same as placing a bet, et cetera, et cetera. But it would put him in, you know, some sort of jeopardy there. The the most recent precedent that the league office has pointed to is a player named Jared Cozart, who was fined in 2015 um, for placing some illegal bets on non-baseball, but that was, you know, a fine. This is obviously a much higher profile case, and I think there's a lot of uh, confusion or or at least uh, speculation for people around the sport about why the league is not being more aggressive and saying that he's under investigation. Andy Their M- stance is that they, he always says he's a victim of a crime. So we shall see. Andy McCullough, the senior writer from the athletic joining me here on the rich Eisen show. So what are the Dodgers saying? What are you hearing out of that end of things? right now uh, they they're not going to be commenting on this one i think i mean it's it's a you know ken rosenall and i had a had a you know piece up today just kind of outlining all the unanswered questions and part of it is because you know otani did not speak after the game you know mizahara has not been available you know it's not responded to requests for comment um in the days subsequently to giving the two you know differing accounts to espn um you know nez Bolello, otani's agent has declined comment dodgers officials you know stan Kasten and andrew friedman declined comment uh dave roberts the dodgers manager you know kind of has to go out there and talk because that's his job is he has to talk to the media twice a day but even he is kind of unable to get into the 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 meat of it as of right now you know the dodgers are kind of just going to seem like they're going to try and roll through it and play with otani as their th and you know i suspect that he will not be addressing this in any meaningful fashion um he's a very private person to begin with um you know very reticent to reveal details of his personal life and it's hard to imagine now is the time when he suddenly opts for transparency but you know i was very surprised that you know ipe mizuhara gave that initial account to espn so uh you know anything can happen yeah. So it's it's not a story I expected to be covering this week. I'll tell you that. Much. Well, nobody did. That's why I'm asking about the Dodgers. <laughs> did they, they they had no inkling. Obviously, they must be stunned. They must be absolutely gobsmacked as to what's happening right now. Andy. Yeah, I mean, and and one of the things you know we you know Ken Rosenthal and I were, were writing about today is this is the sort of thing that the Dodgers should have known. Is it something that in their due diligence should they have been aware that you know at the very least Mizuhara was tied up with a, you know Southern California uh, legal bookmaker. Hard to know. I mean, uh, you can, I can sort of understand it both ways that like, how would you, you know, get that versus, you know, it's the sort of thing that people talk about. I, it, it's a, it's a shocking sort of story for sure. And they, I believe, you know, my understanding is the Dodgers were, were caught off guard by it. I'm sure they, they were, I guess, what would you vet the, the, anyone in his circle? I mean, of course you're not doing that while you're, while you're battling the blue Jays and everything else as you're, trying to keep everybody, you know, under wraps, quiet, because um, any any false move would blow the opportunity to get the greatest player that baseball has to offer internationally, nationally, for anybody that would cut through the noise in our sports world. For Why would you think anything was up with this guy that was untoward? Yeah. Although, unless you plugged into the gambling community, because that was the piece that kind of, part of the piece in ESPN that, that shocked me, is that uh, the 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 gambler in question, the bookie in question, uh, didn't disabuse any of his clients of the notion that Otani yeah. was a client. So people had to be talking right. around these parts here, right? And know? that's the counter to your initial point: is like, yes, obviously, what you know, how do you find this out? It's like, well, this guy was letting people know. It appears that you know he was taking bets from someone, you know, either either Otani or someone representing Otani. That seems to be the way that you know uh, that they presented it in the reporting from ESPN, and so. Um, yeah, I, I, I can see it both ways. I, you know, you can also argue like if you just hear, oh, you know, uh, he's involved with a guy who's been gambling too much. It's like, well, okay, it's Shohei Otani. He's, you know, he's the modern day Babe Ruth. Like that's a risk we can take. I, I, I suspect you were not imagining it to be a scandal of this magnitude. And And, And it's still, you know, it's still so much that needs to like unfold. We just don't know what happened. You know, and it's really hard to to get our arms around until you have a narrative that is sort of established as what actually happened here. And, and you know, anybody that's sent money from their bank 
you know, website, which is most anybody who has money in, in one of the major banks of the United States, which is maybe most everyone in the sound of our voices right now, Andy, knows mm-hmm. that if you send money, you're going to get like a code to your phone. You got to plug it in. Right. And, you know, I, I, I've I've never straight up uh, wired the amount of money that Otani was wiring. <laughs> I can only imagine the number of bank representatives right. that would have to be involved with a, a, yeah. a, a wire of this size. And by the way, if it was the same amount every time, that's nine times he sent this amount to the same guy, you know, the same individual. Wouldn't that set off an alarm bell somewhere? You know? Yeah. I, I was going to say, you know, your career seems like it's going better than mine. So you probably have more experience theoretically sending that sum of money. But <laughs> no. I, you know, so we're on the same page. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's another, you know, part of this story that sort of needs to be vetted out, right, is because ESPN, you know, based on their reporting and bank documents they had, they had, you know, Otani's name going to, uh, you know, Matthew Bauer, uh, the, you know, alleged bookmaker. And so how did that happen? How did the theft occur is something that is going to need, you know, if the theft occurred, how did it occur? How did you get past that sort of, um, you know, thing that we all know of just trying to transfer, you know, 500 bucks from in between bank accounts, right? It's not the easiest thing in the world. So it's another thing that sort of needs to be vetted out. And, you know, hopefully we'll have more clarity on it. But yes, you raise a great point that it, it's something that does not immediately pass the smell test, I guess. And I, Andy McCullough here on the Rich Eisen show from uh, the Athletic joining me here, the senior writer uh, for baseball um, right here on the Rich Eisen show. And I guess we're going to find out just how well uh, Otani can block out noise for the first time in his career. Negative noise, right? I mean, th- there's always been people pulling him in so many different mm-hmm. directions. I know he is active on Instagram um, or he's out there and he'll see all the memes um, and all the jokes and the fact that there is yeah. a guy. And honestly, you know, a guy named Betts in front of him in the lineup, you know, and so I hadn't thought about that. It, it's all it's all out there, Andy, you know, yeah. and and so what what the Dodgers, I guess, were the first ones to kind of keep the, the reporters at bay. What what is next? Here they they've got a, a series with the Angels this weekend, don't they, for spring training before it all yes, starts? Yes, yeah, the the freeway series, yeah, and then uh, and then spring training will, or excuse me, then the regular season will kick off later in the week. Yeah, it's going to be a circus. Uh, it was already going to be a circus. You know, I was there at you know at Camelback Ranch, you know, covering the Dodgers a little bit this spring, and it was already very crowded, very intense. Um, you know, a ton of attention. And now you, you know, you take a player who was already an international superstar and merited so much attention and you throw a national scandal on top of that. Yeah. It's going to be um, a significant sort of, I'm like, I tend to downplay like media, uh, not downplay, but I just kind of disregard like, you know, media related controversies. Like, Oh, there's all these reporters here. You know, it's a distraction. Now these guys are professionals, right? Like they, they tend to be good at blocking out the noise, but this is a level of noise. That's a bit different than just, you you know, a bunch more reporters there asking you about, you know, going one for four instead of three for four. It's um, I th- I think it's going to be, um, you know, a, a bit more of a challenge uh, than it would have been just in a normal season. And uh, but, you know, it, it's the timeline of how quickly this will move, how much information will come out at, you know, at what pace. So it's just hard to know right now because it's it's somewhat uh, of a bit of an unprecedented situation. Well, uh, how soon, last one for you, Andy, how soon do you think until a certain 82-year-old um, resident of, I believe, Las Vegas, Nevada, who uh, once upon a time uh, resided in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, raises his head and comments uh, where, where, where is Peter Edward Rose in this whole situation, Andy? Because I suspect you could find him. I mean, if you just yeah. reached out to his people, he'd sure be happy to come on the show. I, I you know, that's an interesting thought. Um, but <laughs> don't you think he's yeah. got he's got some thoughts? And I mean, he, I and, think, and, that... and even though mm-hmm. it's, it's it's patently unfair to say that this is exactly what Otani has done, but there's there's so many unanswered questions, and you know, nature abhors a vacuum. When when yeah. is he when is he going to pop up? You know, I uh, you know give it give it time. Uh, it's like uh, you know what's a, it's not Groundhog's Day because that doesn't always happen. I don't know. It's it's um, I, I think it is interesting. You know that this story occurs as Major League Baseball, along with so many other sports leagues, just become more entangled in the world of gambling and accepting money from bookmakers and things like that to, you know, having sponsorships. And you, you turn on a television and you see all these ads. I mean, we're a lot, you know, my phone is just lit up constantly 
uh, with ads for, you know, betting on stuff. And I, I don't, you know, I play poker, but I don't like sports bet. And so I'm just getting flooded. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think that it's, it's, it's a really, uh, it's a bit of a slippery slope, you know, and, and you're starting to see some of the ramifications of it, you know, and that you can see how like even folks who have, you know, access to significant income or, you know, can get enmeshed in it. Andy McCulloch, uh, before I let you go, tell me about your book coming out in May about Kershaw and how much time you yeah. spent on it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, You're uh, welcome. so it's a book about uh, Clayton Kershaw, the Dodgers pitcher. It'll be out May seventh. Um, it um, I've spent past couple years working on it. I was the Dodgers beat writer for the Los Angeles Times for several years, and so that sort of forms kind of the um, you know how I initially got to know Kershaw. I just thought that he was a player who, in this era, there really was you know someone worth exploring in a full scale biography in the way that you know he was the central figure of postseason baseball for about a decade you know sort of his quest to try and win a championship was the animating question of every postseason basically it's like is this the year that he can do it and I thought just sort of charting you know getting to talk to him about that process about you know what it has been like sort of operating under the pressure that he has operated on really for the last 20 years of his life um, was worth, you know, exploring. He was, you know, generous with his time. We talked a bunch over the last, you know, couple of years for it. And so I'm excited for folks to read it. You know, it's, um, it's uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a long process, but we're getting close to, you know, coming out. And so uh, I'm looking forward to for people to get to get a chance to read. Well, that's coming out on May 7th. And again, I, I guess I should have reached out beforehand before the book's already probably in, in print and getting ready to come out. But uh, had we spoken earlier, I would have told you uh, to, to look into, to see if it's true, if Clayton Kershaw uh, played uh, on the same high school as Matthew Stafford. I heard that. <laughs> uh, you, maybe you want to run that one down, Andy, for yeah. for the paperback. You know? Yeah, Ma- Matthew Stafford once got an almost concussion on Clayton Kershaw's trampoline. So. Oh, now there you go. Look at you advancing the story. There you go. I had no idea. Did he have a breaking blue- news? Was there a blue tent in the backyard for him to get checked down in? I was told of, that he toughed it out. An independent observer that sat him down for a couple of uh, a couple of bounces. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks, Andy. Maybe that was his first concussion. There Thanks for having me. Appreciate guys. your time, sir. Appreciate your time. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.